Hey everyone, how are you doing? You have Mike here, and today we're going to take a look at the Inkbird ICC500T. Uh, this here is a full CO2 controller. It has options both to uh, control either a burner or a uh, CO2 bottle, and it also has an XPEL for a fan, so it's got an exhaust for a fan. Uh, so it is a full-on CO2 controller. It comes with both the controller as well as the sensor. Uh, the sensor uses an NDIR, which is non-dispersive infrared. Uh, you can actually look that up. I'll put a link down below. There's some really cool information. Um, we actually have another meter that we've used and uh, checking this one to, to that one. They both use NDIR. Uh, this one here has a 30% error rate. The other one has a 50% error rate. Um, and they're actually both reading within like 5 or 10 parts per million of each other, which is kind of ridiculously close. Um, so I'm going to say that they're fairly accurate since I have another CO2 meter to test it against um, and it's giving me the same results. Um, so one thing that I did find uh, with looking at this book was it's just very confusing in order to set up. You only do have three buttons like you do on all your other Inkbird products as well but uh, just setting up the amount of, of data that you need to set up in this to really set up your full 24-hour cycle um, is quite a bit and it can be a little bit confusing and daunting for somebody. So uh, I'm going to save you guys a whole bunch of frustration and effort um, and I'm going to teach you how to set up all three time modes. So what we're going to do is take this into a uh, better place uh, so we can give you guys a better shot to film and then we're going to come back, set up our CO2 bottle and we're going to uh, start testing this little tent behind us and uh, we're going to see how long it takes to bring it up and then we're going to see it hold it there and kick back on and do its controller job, do its controller thing and keep it within a certain parameter that we're looking for. So, let's get at it. All right guys, so what we're going to do here is show you how to set it up into the three different modes. Normal mode, which basically runs CO2 all the time. Uh, whatever you set it to here, it will stay to here. Continuous timer mode, which allows us to set up uh, kind of like a whole schedule for 24 hours, which is what we have here. We're going to do that next. Uh, then the next thing we have is a TR2, which is a target timer. So that means that it will not advance to the next cycle until it hits the CO2 requirement that you put into the program. Uh, so we're going to get into these three right now. So let's get into uh, the TR0 normal mode. Uh, so what you want to do is hold the set button for about four or five seconds till it starts to flash. Uh, so the C5 is going to ask you what you want to set your parts per million to. So 1300, that sounds like a reasonable number. So uh, we're going to hit that. The HD is asking for the difference. Now, HD, uh, this is going to control your work one. Uh, so your work one. So let's say you have a set number of 1300. Well, if it drops to 1290, that's when it's going to kick on, a difference of 10. So that's good. That's what we're looking for. Uh, work 2. Now, this here, like I said, offers the ability to uh, exhaust as well as provide CO2. So there's two plugs, two outlets, work 1 and work 2. So work 2 would run the uh, exhaust. Uh, we don't really want it to do that since we use a bottle. Uh, CO2 is expensive. So... We're going to put this at 300 parts per million just so that it never turns on. It's going to be way high up there, so it, that's not going to be an issue for us. Uh, but if you used a burner, you might want this. So it all depends on how you're set up and how, you, how, you, how your system works. Uh, so we have an alarm. Alarm high, 5,000 parts per million. That's what I have it set to. You can lower that to whatever you want. I just thought it was a reasonable number. I don't really want an alarm beeping, so... It's a reasonable number. So that's what I have it set to. Alarm low, 300 if it were to get too low, which really isn't a, you know, a big deal if it were to get too low. I, anyway, alarms are not something that I'm interested in, so I keep the alarms all, uh, off. Uh, calibration. So if you have another uh, sensor you wanted to calibrate this one to, uh, you could do that here. Large million. And once again, the alarm off. It's asking us what TR code we want. Uh, you have to do note because uh, some of these commands are a little bit different. They don't look the same. 
and they run codes kind of like these codes so on the actual unit which is a little bit different from what it is but this here is asking us what mode we want tr normal mode and so forth continuous mode as you can see there's two options three options here so bam if we want the normal mode that is it it's going to fight to keep it up to 1300 it's going to keep it up to 1300 for 24 hours a day seven days a week it's never going to stop uh, so let's set it up in continuous timer because uh, this is what most people are going to use this for we're going to set it up into this kind of, of a setting right here uh, hopefully we didn't totally delete it you can see here we do have a time setting uh, so we're going to do that right now so once we put it into uh, tr1 mode uh, we're going to have a different set of options here so Alrighty. So we're just gonna explain what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna have 12 segments. Each segment is going to be two hours long. And uh, kind of give you a little bit of an idea here what we're gonna do. Okay, so this here is the same as this. This is just written down on a little bit of a graph just to kind of show you what we're gonna do. So there's gonna be 12 settings that we need to set. Everyone is gonna be two hours long. And we want our CO2 to start at about 600 parts per million. And we want it to go up to 1,200. And we want it to stay there for the remainder of the day, then drop back down to 600 at nighttime. Because why waste CO2 when you don't need it? So this here is what the segments that we're going to do. Uh, as you can see, one segment. And then how we can do this is, uh, let's say, uh, it's you know 6 o'clock in the afternoon right now. So we'd be on segment six, basically. It's really easy to set up. Let's just get started at it and I'll show you how to go from there. Okay. So the first thing that it's going to ask us here is going to be the unit of time. So it's going to be, we have three options. We have hour, we have minute, and we have days. So we want to do this by the hour because we just said we want to have 24 hours and build this table here. So this next part here is asking us uh, the cycle of time. So this is going to be uh, 24 hours. We want it to be for 24 hours. So next. Uh, this one here is uh, automatic or manual mode. So if we were to have a power failure uh, on automatic mode, it would try to recover that for you and put you back onto the time cycle that it thinks you're at. It tries to calculate it. Uh, manual mode, it's just going to sit here and flash and ask for your uh, heads up on how to uh, best pick which time mode you want to be on, whether that's depends on the hour of the day, right? Go back to this chart, which one you want to be on. So that's what it's asking there. Okay, so this here is asking how many segment periods we want. So we want 12 segment periods. So we're going to pick 12 because that's going to give us. And this here is asking us where we would like to start our segment period on. So this is where I was saying, if it's, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to pick segment three because that's where we have our 12 o'clock period. So uh, we're going to start on segment two. Actually, it's as close to 12. We'll start at segment three. Uh, so here is where we program these next numbers here from 12 all the way up. So a little trick that I like to do to make this a little bit easier is uh, I like to end my last number with the number of segment that it's on. This will let you know what segment you're on uh, even without looking at the menu. I think it's a little cheating way to figure it out, but it, it works. So uh, HO1 is asking how many hours we'd like to set this up for. We want this for two hours and we're going to have to do this for every time. We do, do we want an alarm? No, we don't want an alarm. Uh, so segment two, we want it to go up to 1,200 parts per minute. And as you can see, uh, segment two is gonna be 12.02. We're gonna set this, we want our hours, instead of 10 hours between the gap, we want this to be two. And once again, we're gonna keep doing this all the way through Four, 
And there you have it, guys. That is it. It is done. This is the whole segment here done for 24 hours. Okay, so now that we've got segment two done, I, I think that's the most, like mostly everyone's going to need that segment two, or um, TR1, sorry. Um, that's pretty much the hardest one to set up. That's what you need to set up uh, in order to use it uh, in a 24-hour cycle. I'm um, sure there's easier ways you could do that. You don't need to do a full 24 hour uh, every two hour segment, but it just kind of works out easier uh, because then, like I said, like for some reason, if you want to, you know, say that it's, you know, even like a time change <laughs> or anything like that, it's easy to switch it over. All you got to do is, you know, once again, just repick your segment that you're on. Um, if you have it, you know, if you start this at, let's say, like nine o'clock in the morning and you just go, you want two segments or whatever. Uh, two 12 hour segments that's fine too but um, I guess for the video's sake I, I was at least going to set up a full segment for you guys uh, so let's look at the last one it's a TR2 like I said this one here is it's I don't even know how we would possibly use this or who would use this because it goes by the target time and not by the the timer itself uh, so for instance if you were to have a target timer, a uh, target of, you know, let's say 900 parts per million. Uh, and your ambient CO2 or whatever is like 930 parts per million, whatever. Uh, it would never switch over to the next time until it drops below the 100 parts per million. Now, how are you going to do that? You know, uh, so not really practical. Um, you, I guess you could set up the fine tune it, but you never know. You're, the CO2 fluctuates all the time. If I open a window, my CO2 in my house will drop to 700 parts per million. If I have my windows closed, it goes up to 1,500 So, this varies all the time. So having a TR, working in TR2, I don't know if most people are, if anybody's going to use that or not. But uh, TR1, continuous time mode and normal mode are going to be the most used. These ones here, uh, preferably, preferably this one here, continuous timer mode. All right, guys, so let's go set this up on a tent. Let's connect this to my bottle of CO2 and uh, let's do a, uh, a full run through test and see. I figure that it's probably going to go up to about 50 parts per million higher um, and to about 40 to 50 parts per million lower than our, than our gas because it takes a while for the CO2 to get back, fill up the tent and then it's going to fill it up a little bit more than it needs um, and it's going to go down a little bit under what it needs. So uh, let's go set it up on the tent and let's go find out how much it swings. <laughs> 